Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to Marine Mammal Monday. So excited to be here with you today. It is four o'clock on the dot, so I'm going to give it a couple minutes for folks to join us here, but really excited to be on for this last and final edition of Marine Mammal Monday. And today we're going to be talking all about seal and sea lion superstars of this year. So I'll be highlighting some of the amazing stories of the animals that the Marine Mammal Center has been able to rescue and rehabilitate this year. So you're in for a treat. It's going to be a really special one. And I'm going to give it just a couple minutes as folks are joining. Um, and so, so grateful for everyone hopping on today for this very special edition of Marine Mammal Monday and our last one. So I'll be sharing a little bit more as we get more folks joining here. Uh, but I also wanted to take a moment to just say hello and introduce myself. If you are a regular viewer of Marine Mammal Monday, you are probably expecting Crystal, who is our normal presenter for these. Um, but she unfortunately had other priorities that she had to take on for today. So I'll be kind of taking the lead on this presentation today. You may recognize me if you've been watching Marine Mammal Monday for the past two years. I might look familiar because um, we started this program back in 2020 and I was the, the lead presenter. So it's great to be back again. I'm so happy to, to see you all here. And I see that we've got a few people now joining our Marine Mammal Monday. So you're in the right place. So good to see you, Pam. I see some uh, familiar faces in the chat. Hi, Carrie. Long time no see. Missed you too. <laughs> So good to see you all again. Um, if you haven't yet shared in the chat or the comments, I would love to hear where you're tuning in from today and how many Marine Mammal Mondays have you seen? Are you one of our diehard fans that has been with us for the past two years? Or is this your first Marine Mammal Monday? <laughs> Let me know in those comments. And so great to see you all again. Thank you for joining. So for this very special edition of Marine Mammal Monday, we are going to be talking about seal and sea lion superstars of 2022. So we're going to highlight all of the amazing animals that the center has been able to rescue and rehabilitate this year. And hopefully we'll get to hear some of your favorites as well. <laughs> I see some folks saying, hi, Cindy from Iowa, welcome. Susan says it's her first time here over on YouTube. Thanks for watching, Susan. We have Julia, one of our current volunteers on Topside who works with our Harbor Seals. Welcome, Julie. And we have Cindy is sharing that this is her second Marine Mammal Monday. Oh, so glad you could join. And Michael's also sharing second time joining, loved the sea otter talk. Oh my gosh, yes. Crystal is our sea otter expert. She could talk all day about sea otters. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Welcome. First timer. Elisa has missed a few Marine Mammal Mondays, but is happy to be back. Welcome back. <laughs> And I see Peter is on the call as well. He's one of our superstar education volunteers. Welcome, Peter. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining for this very special edition. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. So for today, um, I did a quick introduction, but I'll share again. My name is Laura Gill. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the community engagement manager at the center. I actually started Marine Mammal Monday back in 2020, and I'm covering for Crystal today for our very last Marine Mammal Monday. And then we have the wonderful Katie Dianacenzo, per usual, supporting our comments. So if we don't get to any of your questions during the live program, she's going to help answer those for you in the comments. So feel free to leave comments throughout, questions. I'll try and get to them. And if not, we will follow up with you. All right. Now, for those of you that it's your first Marine Mammal Monday, first and last, I guess, <laughs> I wanted to do a just a quick introduction of what the center does. Um, you might already know that we're a global leader in marine mammal health, science, and conservation, and we're also the world's largest marine mammal hospital. So we have really exciting work where we're hoping to advance global ocean conservation through our work with marine mammals. 
And pictured here is our facility in Salsalito, which is open to the public Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, 10 a.m. to 4. You can come and visit us and see this life-saving work that we're doing. But none of this would be possible if it weren't for our close to 1,500 dedicated volunteers. We're completely nonprofit, so we depend on our volunteers to help us do the rescue, to help us do the animal care and rehabilitation, to help us in our research. We couldn't do any of this work without our volunteers. And I know quite a few of you are on the call today watching, so thank you for supporting us, our wonderful volunteers. So at the Marine Mammal Center, uh, we cover 600 miles of California coastline. So that's as far north as Mendocino and as far south as San Luis Obispo. And that's here in California, but we do also have a hospital on the big island of Hawaii. And we'll get to talk about some of those very special animals that we take care of in Hawaii today as well as we talk about our seal and sea lion superstars. But every single animal's journey starts the same way. It starts with a phone call to our 24-hour hotline. You've got the number listed here. It's 415-289-SEAL. So it's very catchy, easy to remember. And that's the number that you call to report if you see a sick or injured marine mammal along our coast. We rely on the public as our eyes and ears out on those beaches. So it's also thanks to all of you that we're able to do this life-saving work. So once we get those phone calls in, we dispatch our volunteers out to the beach where we'll do an assessment and see if that marine mammal does in fact need rescue. You've got pictured in the top left here some of our dedicated volunteers with their protective equipment like these wooden shields. They might use nets to help capture that marine mammal and we'll eventually transport them up to our hospital here in Salsalito. Once they're on site, you'll be able to see uh, we have our dedicated volunteers and veterinarians, which is you'll see in the top right picture here, that are helping to diagnose and provide critical care to rehabilitate any of these marine mammals. So pictured is actually a sea otter receiving an ultrasound. So essentially anything that you could have done at a human hospital, we can do for marine mammals here. Then at the bottom left, you see a picture of some of our, what it looks like when we're doing our research on site. Not only do we want to rescue and rehabilitate these marine mammals, but we want to understand why they're getting sick in the first place, how we can prevent them from getting sick in the future, or how we might even innovate marine mammal medicine, and also sharing this with our vast network across the globe so that other people doing similar work can share these resources and the research that we're doing here. Finally, the ultimate goal is to release those marine mammals back out to the ocean. So in the top or the bottom right picture, you're going to see some chubby harbor seals that were successfully rehabilitated and are waddling their way back out to the ocean. That is the, the ultimate goal for every single animal that comes through our doors. And then I have the pleasure of sharing the stories of these animals. We do a lot of educational programs here at the center in person as well as online. We've got lots of great resources. So while today is the last Marine Mammal Monday, all of our past recordings of Marine Mammal Monday can be found on our website, marinemammalcenter.org. Just click that education tab and click on online learning resources. You'll be able to see every single recording that we've done for the past three years, as well as finding new online resources. We have curriculum, activities, lots of great things on there so that people can continue to learn more about marine mammals and how we can help them. All right, so that leads us to what's happening at the hospital today. Well, we've got um, a handful of animals here in Salsalito, about 20 total, 21 total, including the Hawaiian monk seals that we're caring for out at our hospital in Kaiola. So 
with that being said, it is kind of our slower time of year in the fall and winter is when we tend to see less animals on site, which is a good thing. That means they're healthy and out in the ocean and doing what they're supposed to. No one wants to stay at the hospital forever, right? So on the one hand, it's great that we've got the lower patient numbers. And it's also kind of a great opportunity for us to highlight some of the amazing success stories that we've been able to do this year at the center. So that is the theme for today. We're going to dive into the, the stories of our seal and sea lion superstars of this past year. So I wanted to start first with a summary of all the different types and species of marine mammals that we rehabilitated at the Marine Mammal Center this year. And we're not done yet. <laughs> These numbers are from last month. So we are still, of course, admitting and helping rehabilitating patients right as we speak. Uh, but as of last month, you can see that we already worked with 284 California sea lions, 139 northern fur seals, 41 Pacific Harbor seals. We even saw 21 Guadalupe fur seals this year, 17 sea otters, 13 northern fur seals, and 10 Hawaiian monk seals. So as much as I would have loved to share all 525 stories of each of these animals that came through our doors, I had to narrow it down. So we're only going to talk about five stories today, but they're going to be representative of some of the more common things, common ailments that we saw this year, um, and also some really unique cases. So it was really difficult to narrow down these wonderful stories, but we are going to talk about Circle, the elephant seal, Siona, the harbor seal, Plankton, the California sea lion, Padawan, the sea otter, and RL72, one of our Hawaiian monk seals. And uh, hopefully, once we go through, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everyone who their favorite superstar was. So keep that in mind as we're going through the talk today. <laughs> so to start us off, I'm actually gonna start with Plankton, who I just love that name. And if you're curious about how our animals get their names, it's anyone who calls and reports a sick or, marine, a sick or injured marine mammal to us will then get an opportunity to help name it. So that's how we end up with some funny names like Circle <laughs> and Plankton. But to start us off, I wanted to share Plankton's story because Poor Plankton was kind of a very typical story that we saw with our California sea lions at the hospital this year. So Plankton was rescued back in June from Morro Bay, which is the more southern end of our range down in San Luis Obispo. And initially, there were some folks that were trying to get to their boat on a boat dock, and they saw this little sea lion kind of tucked over holding onto looked like it was holding onto its stomach like maybe it was in some abdominal pain and luckily they knew to call the marine mammal center and they were sure to keep a safe distance and they couldn't really get access to their boat because little plankton was on the dock there so they called our 24-hour hotline we sent down our rescue team and we confirmed that plankton did need a rescue did need a pickup so we picked plankton up and brought plankton to our hospital. And once on site, like I mentioned, we can do anything that you might do for a human at a, a human hospital. And just like when you go to the doctor, we always do an admit exam. So just like when you go in, you get a checkup, you get blood samples taken, urine samples, maybe uh, fecal samples. We do all of that glamorous work on site here at our laboratory. And that allows us to then diagnose our patients and provide them life-saving care. So once we got our lab results back, we saw that not only was plankton malnourished and underweight, but also tested positive for leptospirosis. Now, if leptospirosis sounds familiar, that is because it's something that can affect people as well, or it's something that you actually vaccinate your dogs, your pets for. 
And leptospirosis is a bacteria. So it's a bacterial infection that affects the kidneys. So pictured here, I have, if you were to look under the microscope, that bacteria almost looks like ramen noodles <laughs> pictured on the left here. And um, that little organ in the center is the kidney, which is what leptospirosis affects. Now, your kidney is the organ that helps your body process water. So if something's wrong with your kidney, it's very common to feel dehydrated or to, to be experiencing pain. And so what we'll typically see as symptoms for California sea lions that have leptospirosis is that they're tucked over, like what you see in this picture here, this little sea lion. Or we'll also sometimes see them drinking ocean water, which of course is salt water, which in turn just makes them even more dehydrated. So it's very unusual for any marine mammal to drink ocean water. It's not good for them. Instead, marine mammals like California sea lions get their water from their food. It's called metabolic water. And so that's also a, a clear sign if an animal is drinking salt water, something is very likely off with that animal. So those are kind of the two common symptoms that we see with this bacterial infection of the kidney called leptospirosis. Now, thankfully, it's treatable. So when we bring our patients in here, we're able to provide them antibiotics for that bacteria. And it's usually about a four to eight week recovery time to finish that round of antibiotics and to make sure that they're well fed and well rested. And we'll also provide them lots of fluids to rehydrate them. So pictured here, you might recognize just like at a human hospital, a little IV bag. We provide um, bags like that for our patients to rehydrate them. I also have pictured here a little gray tub full of fresh water. So if that seal or sea lion is drinking water, then we'll at least make sure it's fresh water and not salt water. And this is really effective in helping those animals that are brought in for leptospirosis. So thankfully, Plankton made it to our hospital, got lots of good antibiotics, lots of good fluids to rehydrate, and lots of good food to treat that malnutrition and get Plankton really fattened up and healthy. And thankfully, Plankton was able to be released out on the beach. And if you look closely at the picture here, you can see that Plankton was released with a friend. So Plankton is kind of at the inside the carrier here and he's even got his name labeled on the grate and was released with a, a, a colleague as well from the hospital. So this is a great picture of Plankton being released. You might also be able to see if you look really closely that plankton has a bright orange flipper tag. And this is something that every animal that come through our doors will receive. And it's kind of like a fancy ear piercing, but right in their flipper. So it will stay with them for the rest of their life. And it has a unique identification number on it. So if we ever see plankton again, we would be able to look at that unique identification number and we could look up in our records what plankton was rescued for. So it's a great way that we can keep track of our patients if we see them again. And then uh, here's another great photo of plankton marching back out to the ocean after successfully being rehabilitated and released. Now, I wanted to highlight plankton as a superstar because plankton was one of the many, many sea lions that we cared for this year that had leptospirosis. It's a very contagious bacteria because it's spread through bodily fluid. And if you know sea lions, they like to pile right on top of each other. If you've ever been down to Pier 39 or Fisherman's Wharf, you might have seen that sea lions like to be right on top of each other. They'll even uh, play king of the dock and kick each other off the platforms. But unfortunately, that does mean that they're around a lot of their bodily fluids and things like a bacterial infection could easily spread. So we did rescue quite a few sea lions with leptospirosis this year. So to me, plankton is a perfect superstar and a great representative of the common uh, ailments that we saw in sea lions this year.
And another a great example of um, the common ailments that a lot of our harbor seals face this year is Siona, the harbor seal pictured here. And I just love this picture because she looks like she's soaking up the sun. Her sweet little eyes are closed and her nose pointed to the, the sunlight. So really sweet photo. And Siona was rescued not too long ago, actually, October, uh, from again from San Luis Obispo, so that further south part of our range. And we knew that Siona had actually encountered, um, had some human interaction, and that could have been part of the reason why she needed to be brought into the hospital. She also had some trauma to her eyelid, a, a small abrasion or scratch, which we can't be sure where exactly that came from, but we knew that it was something that we would want to help Siona. So when we first got um, our phone calls, remember we rely on the public to call our 24 hour hotline to report sick or hurt marine mammals. And when we first got that phone call, it was actually coming from some surfers sharing that there was this little harbor seal pup that was trying to crawl onto people's boards and was actually going up to people on a populated beach. And this is not normal behavior for a young harbor seal pup. What's more typical at this point is that harbor seal pups stay with their mom nursing for almost a full month drinking mom's milk, staying on the beach. And then mom will go offshore, leaving her pup on the beach temporarily to go find fish and forage and feed herself. So she has enough strength to care for her pup. But what happens is if, if this happens on a very populated beach, if there's a person not knowing or maybe a dog off leash and it gets too close to that pup, mom will see this potentially dangerous situation and she might actually abandon that pup because she thinks it's too dangerous for her to go back. So then we end up with these really young harbor seal pups that haven't had enough time with their mom nursing and getting big and strong and healthy. And so thankfully, we got these phone calls of people letting us know that there was this young pup by itself, that it was around a lot of people. Um, there were dogs also around her on the beach and scared her back into the water. So it was definitely one of those situations that could have been prevented as long as you keep a nice safe distance, at least 50 feet from any marine mammals, maybe that separation from her mom could have been prevented. So a great way to help future generations of harbor seals is to keep that nice safe distance and call the Marine Mammal Center. We're the experts. We're more than happy to come out and check on these, these young animals. So once we got the phone call, we got Siona to our hospital. And this is a picture of her on site here. And she actually made fast friends with a lot of her pen mates. We had a few other harbor seals at the time. So she got to snuggle up with some of the other harbor seal pups that were in our care. And like I said, she was treated for that small injury on her eye, that small laceration. It's hard to say where that came from because we didn't see every single incident. Um, but we did see that her umbilical cord was still open and healing. So this was helpful to us to actually age Siona. And we knew that because this umbilical cord was still healing, she was a newborn pup. So only a few days old at this point when she needed rescue. So that means that Siona had to learn how to eat fish, how to swim, how to dive and hunt, all of which our amazing volunteers and veterinarians helped her do here on site at our hospital. So she was regularly fed at the beginning some delicious fish milkshakes. <laughs> so because she didn't have mom's milk and had never 
probably seen a fish before, we start with fish milkshakes, where we actually take whole fish, we blend it up in a blender, we add a little bit of salmon oil for the good fatty omega acids, um, and we added water for consistency and some milk matrix, just like baby formula. And we created this fish milkshake that we were able to feed Siona. And once she started getting stronger and older, we eventually taught her how to eat whole fish like she normally would on her own. And she fattened up quite well. She ate that whole fish until she was healthy enough to be returned to the ocean. Sounds tasty, right, Jacqueline? <laughs> so thankfully, with lots of those fish milkshakes and eventually whole fish, Siona this is a picture of Siona being released back to the ocean. And I love this picture because it looks like she's just flying out of her crate, ready to go back, very eager to return to her ocean home. And it was about three months of care um, that Siona was with us at the hospital and then eventually released. And at her release, she actually swam out a little bit she popped her head out almost as if to say thank you. So this is a picture of Siona on her way back to the ocean. <laughs> so really the, the moral of the story here with Siona and many of the harbor seals that we cared for this year at the Marine Mammal Center, a lot of that could be avoided if we view wildlife safely. So we talked about keeping that safe distance at least 50 feet away, making space for marine mammals, especially young pups that have that that need that critical time with their moms to nurse and grow big and strong, and to call the Marine Mammal Center, 415-289-SEAL. Very easy to remember our number. So that can help prevent a lot of young harbor seal pups from getting separated and having to come to the hospital at all. All right, then that brings us to Circle, our northern elephant seal, who, I, who I've chosen as our superstar representative today. Now, Circle was rescued um, back in April, so earlier this year, from Cowell Beach in Santa Cruz. And if you're familiar with that area, Cowell Beach is kind of known as a, a surfer's beach. It's a very populated beach um, right next to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. So a lot of people around that area typically. And what was really unusual about Circle is that he was very malnourished. So he was a very skinny elephant seal. Now, it might be hard to tell from the pictures here, but at only one to two months old, an elephant seal pup should be about 300 pounds. That is a big baby. And Circle here was only a little bit over birth weight, around 75 pounds or so. And so we knew right away that Circle was struggling to find food on its own or perhaps was prematurely separated from mom and wasn't able to nurse to that nice big 300 pound weight. So I have a circle pictured here on the far left. He's got the little blue hat tag. And if you're wondering what that um, little blue tag is, that's just a visual tag for us to be able to tell which animal is which. Because while they're all very cute, even looking at this picture, it's impossible <laughs> to tell them apart. So when they have those little hat tags, we are able to see who is who and give the right medicine to the right animal or the right amount of food to that animal. So I'll play this little video here of Circle at the far left with his party hat on. Let's take a look. Hopefully that video came through okay, but just a, a quick little video of Circle when he was on site in our care. 
And Circle was one of the names that we had for our elephant seals this year. We had kind of a shape theme for a lot of the names. So we had cone, corkscrew, crescent, nugget, rhomboid, <laughs> and sphere as other elephant seal names for um, elephant seals that came through our hospital this year. Ooh. All right. Now, Circle was rescued, like I said, down in Santa Cruz at this very populated beach at Cowles Beach. And so the nearest hospital, our nearest triage facility to care for Circle was actually down in Monterey Bay. So just a little bit further south, we were able to pick up Circle, drive him to our Monterey Bay operations location where you can see pictured here, our volunteers were able to stabilize Circle, provide him also some of those delicious fish milkshakes, just like Siona received. And then eventually he was transported up to our main hospital here in Salcedo. But because we cover 600 miles of California coastline, it's important that we have these operations along the coast. So we're not always sending someone all the way down from Salcedo to Santa Cruz if we need a quicker response time. So we do have our Monterey Bay operations and operations down in San Luis Obispo as well. So thankfully, Circle just needed a lot of really good milkshakes, learned to eat whole fish, and eventually was released. And here's my picture. Whoops. Looks like there's a little bit of a lag. Ah, here we go and was thankfully released actually at Point Lobo. So also a little bit further south, a beautiful, beautiful area that is protected and also a really great place for marine mammals to go. You can see lots of different marine mammals at Point Lobos, different seals, sea lions. It's a, a great location for a second chance at life. And so pictured, you have Circle so excited to be released that he's pressing his face up against the, the crate that you can see in the picture on the left. And then kind of easing back into the ocean in these little kiddie pools or these shallow areas out at Point Lobos. <laughs> and was also released with a, a colleague, with a friend here. So there are two pictured kind of touching noses as they head back to the ocean. So Circle, again, is a great representative of many, many of the elephant seals that we care for at the Marine Mammal Center year after year. We see that a lot of elephant seal pups need a little bit of extra help, especially with changing ocean conditions like warming waters means that water is rising. So sea level rise that's encroaching on the breeding beaches of these young pups while they're with mom. And then when there's a big storm surge, those pups can get easily washed away from their moms and separated. Some of them might find their way back to mom. Others are not so lucky unless they get called and reported to us. And thankfully, many of them are, so we can help them. Okay, and maybe arguably a fan favorite. Of course, I can't talk about marine mammal superstars without talking about sea otters. <laughs> so we did take care of Paddle One this year. And this is a young sea otter that was rescued back in March from Moss Landing. So again, kind of down south in our Monterey area and was rescued for malnutrition. So was a little bit underweight. But once we admitted Paddle One to the hospital and did our diagnostic tests, we saw that Paddle One had sarcocystis. Now, sarcocystis is a parasite that forms little cysts in the muscle tissue of its host. And what that leads to is kind of a muscle wasting. So we see that um, animals can start coughing a lot, or um, it could even lead to things like pneumonia because they're in such a, a poor body condition. And so while we haven't quite developed a vaccine for sarcocystis, um, it's still being researched, we are able to provide anti 
protozoan or anti-parasite medication, um, as well as anti-inflammatories to help bring down the inflammation. So to ease any of that coughing or discomfort from that muscle tissue wasting. So thankfully, we're able to treat this issue, and especially for something like a sea otter, which we know is a threatened species, really important that we're able to support these marine mammals, um, especially if they're threatened or endangered. Now, our sea otters at the Marine Mammal Center get a very special sea otter spa, we'll call it. We have a very specially um, designed area for our sea otters where it kind of looks like you can see pictured here it kind of looks like a, a bathtub at the bottom there but it also has two areas where the sea otter can stay in a dry section kind of sectioned off from the pool um, and has a little platform to get in and out of that pool and this otter spa. It was specially designed with otters in mind, knowing that otters are kind of like little sea weasels. They have these very dexterous hands, and they have been known to even unscrew bolts of their enclosures. So this, um, you can see in the picture here, all of the bolts are screwed on on the outside of this otter spa <laughs> to prevent them trying to release themselves from the hospital early. And with the smaller kind of pool or bathtub like pool, that allows us to actually be able to control the temperature. So for a sea otter, it's really important that they stay nice and warm. So we want to be able to increase the temperature of that water to care for them the best way we can. So this is a great way for us to be able to deliver fluids, medication, and also making sure that our otters don't uh, release themselves early from the hospital. <laughs> so that's our special otter tote where Padawan was taken care of on site. So for Padawan, one of the main parts of his rehabilitation was lots and lots of food. I mentioned that in addition to that muscle wasting disease, Padawan was also malnourished. Now, sea otters can eat up to 25% of their body weight every day. So they're eating pounds and pounds of food. And here I've pictured Padawan munching down on some delicious clams, <laughs> only the finest for our sea otters. So a lot of Paddle One's recovery was just eating, resting, those anti-inflammatories and anti-parasite medications. So thankfully, with lots of medicine and rest and food, Paddle One was then released on June 1st. That was just over about two months of care back at Moss Landing. So very close to where uh, Paddle One was picked up at uh, Moss Landing. And it looks like he needed a little extra encouragement to go back to the ocean. Maybe he enjoyed the sea otter spa a little too much because you can see they had to tilt the crate up to get him to go back into the water. <laughs> And similar to Siona, Paddle One, once he got back out in the water, kind of poked his head up and gave us almost another little thank you for, for his stay at the Sea Otter Spa. <laughs> Now the center, it's, uh, we've actually worked with a lot of sea otters in our history. So over approximately 750 since the center was established in 1975. And we're really typically working with adult otters. So when they come in for injuries or diseases, parasites like paddle one, we're working primarily with adults, but we're also really fortunate to have wonderful partners down at Monterey Bay Aquarium that will help take any of the juvenile pups um, because they have a surrogate mom otter program where they have older female otters that will kind of adopt or become surrogate mothers to young sea otter pups that were abandoned um, or separated from their moms. So we've got a great partnership there. 
And I had mentioned that particularly working with threatened or endangered species is a really important part of what the center does because we know that every animal has a role to play in their ecosystem. And especially when it comes to marine mammals like sea otters, we actually know that they are a keystone species. So that means that they are really vital to maintaining a balance in their ecosystem. Now, I showed a picture of Padawan eating clams, but another favorite meal of the sea otter are sea urchins, like these little purple spiky guys that I've pictured here. And sea urchins are herbivores. They eat kelp. And when there aren't sea otters to eat the sea urchins, the sea urchins can decimate the kelp forest and eat way, way, way too much of that kelp leaving behind kind of just a barren space with a bunch of urchins and no kelp. So in order to have a healthy kelp forest system, you have to have the sea otters to maintain the balance of the sea urchins. And then you have thriving kelp forest ecosystems where other fish and other animals can thrive in that space. So really important work and every animal has its role to play. Now, speaking of endangered species, I want to talk about our final superstar for our seal and sea lion superstars, our Hawaiian monk seal RL72. Now, the Hawaiian monk seals, you might guess, they are rescued in Hawaii. We don't see them along our California coast, uh, but luckily we have a facility out in Hawaii where we care for them. Now, RL-72 uh, was actually rescued from Maui Island in Hawaii and was rescued for malnutrition, trauma, and human interaction. So let's take a closer look at what exactly that means, that human interaction and trauma. Now, if you look really closely at this picture here where we have the little blue arrow, you might be able to see that there is a monofilament fishing line coming out of the Hawaiian monk seal's mouth here. Now, luckily people on the beach saw RL-72 come up onto the sand. They saw from a distance that maybe something was hanging out of the mouth and they called our hotline for us to go and take a look at this Hawaiian monk seal. When we got a little bit closer and did our assessment to see if the monk seal needed rescue, we saw this fishing line coming out of its mouth and definitely wanted to help this poor Hawaiian monk seal. So that meant because our hospital is actually on the big island of Hawaii, not on Maui, we actually had to take RL-72 on a little trip. <laughs> so we actually loaded them up onto a plane and flew them to the main island of Hawaii where our hospital is located. So RL-72 had quite the journey and thankfully safely landed on the big island of Hawaii on the Kona coast, actually right near the airport. We have our Hawaiian monk seal hospital called Kaiola, and that means the healing sea. And this hospital is dedicated exclusively to working with the endangered Hawaiian monk seal. Hawaiian monk seals are actually the most endangered seal or sea lion in the United States. There's about only 1,500 of them today. And so this is a picture of what um, the inside of our hospital looks like on the big island of Hawaii. So you see a nice big pool here for our Hawaiian monk seal patients. And so we got a closer look and we were able to see that there was in fact that monofilament fishing line coming out of our Hawaiian monk seal's mouth. So we needed to go in and see exactly if that was attached to anything or if it was caught or how we could remove that fishing line. 
And so we actually uh, took RL72 into surgery, as you can see pictured here. Um, just like with a person, if you are going in for surgery and maybe have some extra hair, you might get a little shave down. We did the same thing for RL72. We made sure to shave some of that hair off of the belly. And we were able to see that there was actually a hook attached to the end of that monofilament line. So we wanted to make sure to go in, remove that hook safely and stitch RL72 back up. So I do have a picture here of that hook once we removed it. This is actually what it looked like. So you can see it was kind of a, a circle hook with a little barb here. And then at the top, there was that monofilament line still attached. So it's possible that RL72 was looking for an easy meal and accidentally grabbed a fish that a fisherman had already caught on a line. So luckily we were able to do that successful surgery, remove that hook and RL72 made a full recovery from this. So this is what they looked like post-surgery with that shaved belly. You can see some of the, the sutures there along the belly. And RL72 had a lot of great time to rest and recover at our beautiful pools and um, was thankfully released. Now, I had mentioned this is really important work, especially with the endangered species like the Hawaiian monk seals that we work with. I had mentioned only 1,500 of them alive today. And I see Ian asked a great question. If, the, if there's a triage center on Maui, similar to what we have um, here in the California coast, where we have a triage facility at Monterey Bay and San Luis Obispo, we actually don't have a triage facility on Maui, but we do um, take on any of those phone calls that come in across Maui Island, we also take care of. So our response team is out there. We've got folks answering that those calls and our team is the one that goes out to respond. Um, but uh, we haven't set up a, a hospital there yet like what we have on the big island of Hawaii. Great question, Ian. All right, so but because RL72 was uh, flown in to the big island of Hawaii, it needed to be flown back to Maui so it could so they could be released back to where they started. And so here's kind of another picture of what that very special transport would look like for a Hawaiian monk seal. And then a kind of blurry but still great photo of RL72 returning back to the ocean after a successful rehab and rehabilitation. Now, this is kind of the second chance at life for RL72. And because this is an endangered species, we actually also made sure to tag RL72. So glued on top of the fur here along their back, they have a little satellite tag. And this actually tells us the locations of where this monk seal is going after they've been released. And so we even have a little map here that shows the release site back at Maui. And then um, RL-72 ventured up even further along the Northwestern Hawaiian islands here off of Maui and was kind of circling around these areas. So that's great news knowing that uh, RL-72 was strong and healthy enough to even swim from island to island after release. So here's another great picture. We were also very happy to recite RL-72, which is always wonderful for us when we get to see a patient that we've released and we see them happy and healthy, thriving after release. It's always really reassuring um, that what we're doing is effective. So here's a nice post-release uh, sighting picture. So where can uh, how can we help so with the hawaiian monk seal we talked a lot about how um it was that monofilament fishing line and that fishing hook that 
um, was kind of hooked RL72. So a great way to support this from not happening again in the future is by choosing sustainable seafood. So this is seafood that's caught in a way that doesn't harm any marine life or leave gear out for animals to get caught in. Um, it also means seafood that is very plentiful, that's not depleted or overfished. And a great resource for this is the Seafood Watch Guide that was created by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. It basically tells you a list of all the good choices of seafood that you can choose that don't harm the environment, good alternatives, and um, other seafood to avoid. And another great way, um, at least here in, in California, is if you are in the grocery store and you see seafood with this blue sticker pictured here that says MSC, that stands for Marine Stewardship Council, that means that it's seafood that was sustainably caught. So always a good choice too if you're shopping at the grocery store. And then of course, just like with our other superstars that we talked about today, always call and report if you see a sick or injured marine mammal. And I've listed our Hawaii rescue hotline here as well for anyone tuning in from Big Island or Hawaii. So I see one question from Arlene as well, asking where do most of the Hawaiian monk seals, where are they located? So the majority of the Hawaiian monk seals are actually found out on the Northwestern Hawaiian islands. So not on those big typical islands like Hawaii, like Big Island or Maui, but further off ashore on those smaller islands. And that is a, a really great um, place for them to be. The main issue that they encounter, though, is with things like disease or um, warming water temperatures or um, loss of their habitat, it can be really challenging for Hawaiian monk seals. They face a lot of threats um, and, and things like ocean trash, as we learned today with RL72. So that's why they're so, so endangered. Okay, so we've come to almost the end of our program here. We talked about five amazing marine mammal superstars, our elephant seal, harbor seal, California sea lion, the sea otter, and our monk seal. So now I would love to see who was your favorite superstar. Let me know in the chat <laughs> which one of these was your favorite and uh, let me know in the chat which one of these superstars was your favorite. It's hard to choose. All five of these animals are truly superstars. And actually, all over 500 of the animals we were able to rescue this year are superstars for getting that second chance at life. Um, so it might be hard to pick. But we heard some great stories of resilience today with these marine mammals. So Cindy's saying all of them are superstars. I agree, Cindy. <laughs> um, Adia is saying Plankton was their favorite. Beatrice can't choose. <laughs> um, Ariana says Circle and Plankton. Ian says Padawan. Pam says Siona. Yes, what a sweet face. <laughs> Oh, so I'm so glad that we got to hear some of these great stories. I see lots of votes for Circle, the Elephant Seal, Plankton, Siona, Plankton. <laughs> and Jane is sharing Padawan and Circle from William. Hi, William. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they're all amazing. But um, it sounds like Koja Cat is picking Siona. <laughs> wow. Thank you, everyone, so much. I agree. All these animals are superstars and you are all superstars as well for supporting the Marine Mammal Center, for tuning in, um, especially I see some of you that have been watching Marine Mammal Monday since 2020 when we first started this program. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you and share my gratitude and appreciation for you tuning in month after month, learning more about marine mammals and sharing that with your friends and family. That is one of the best things that you can do to help marine mammals is spread the word, learn more, uh, check out our website for past recordings of these programs. So thank you so, so much. 
Um, I wanted to quickly make sure I answered a couple questions that had come up in the chat as well. Um, so Pam was asking if we would replace this broadcast with something else, maybe less frequency. The, the, Pam will really miss this program. Thank you, Pam. Um, so it, along that line, we actually do, um, since this program was designed specifically for while the Marine Mammal Center in Sausalito was closed to the public, now that we're reopened to the public and having in-person programs, we are restarting our in-person program called Marine Science Sunday. So if you are missing Marine Mammal Monday and you want more of this great content and want to hear more about superstars, I highly encourage you to come on site, come visit us in Salsalito every second and fourth Sunday of the month at 12 and 2 p.m. We do Marine Science Sunday, which is basically an in-person version of this program. So that's kind of why we are switching back into in-person from this virtual experience. So thank you all again so, so much. Um, if you are tuning in from out of town, you're not able to come visit, you can also still support the center online. Um, if anyone's doing any shopping for the holidays, we have gifts that give back. Any donation made to the center, any purchases at our online store goes directly back to providing this life-saving care to our patients. So you can still support us even if you can't visit. Um, and remember, all of these recordings and resources are going to live on our website, marinemammalcenter.org. Hit that education tab and online learning resources where you can find more great programs. So if you can make it, though, in person, this is the lineup for our topics coming up for Marine Science Sunday. That's our in-person version of this program at our Salsalito Hospital. So we've got some great topics on deck. We're going to be talking about animals of the Arctic, parents and pups, super seals, magnificent migrations. So I really hope you can come and visit us and check those programs out in person. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Marine Mammal Monday. So great to see some of you again. And thank you for tuning in and supporting the center. I hope you have a great rest of the month. Happy holidays and hope to see you in person soon. Take care.